Hey, what's up you guys? I wanted to make a video today, I was inspired. I just got finished sizing this Seiko Sarx 055, uh, which I'm very excited about and I'll do a video on later, but uh, this is the most expensive watch I've ever purchased. And when you're going to size this bracelet, this bracelet's um, titanium, you know, it can be a little nerve wracking, especially Seiko uses that pin and collar system. And for me, sizing a bracelet is can be very stressful, um, but I've done a lot of sizing now and I feel like I understand like what is happening when you're sizing a bracelet. There's a lot of videos out there that show you how to do it, but I just wanted to take some, to some time to show you like what is happening and some tips for sizing bracelets that I think will help you out. So first gonna go over what you need. Um, you can't quite see it in the viewfinder, but this is a tray, like a serving tray I'm using, and it has edges, um, you know, raised edges about two inches on each side. And it's really good to work in something like this because um, if some pins or um, especially the collars, if they go flying, um, you know, hopefully they'll be captured in the tray and you won't lose them. Um, and then you can get some of these really cheap on like Amazon. You can get, you can spring for nicer ones, but I've had pretty good luck with the kits off Amazon. Um, you kind of want two of these, um, bricks, these sizing bricks. Um, and ideally you have a tweezers and then there's this, um, screw pin, um, remover. Um, and it's adjustable on the bottom there with this little, um, plate. And then I have uh, two bracelets here. I have uh, the bracelet for my Ray 2, that's just regular pins. And then I have the Seiko Sarb 033 bracelet, that is a pin and collar system. And then finally, you're gonna need one of these um, little pusher hammers that works with the hammer. And uh, you're gonna want a lot of light. Now obviously I'm in the studio lights here, so we have plenty of light, but when you are doing it at your house, you might not have studio lights, you're gonna wanna use like a headlamp or something, some sort of light that you don't have to worry about, but the more light you have, the more information you have. You want as much light on this as possible, it'll really help. Um, so, first I wanna show you the more standard, um, I'm gonna move this out of the way, the more standard regular pin. So, on a regular pin bracelet, this is actually like what's happening with the system. And I would recommend when you do do a sizing, when you're looking at your bracelet, you know, draw a picture because drawing a picture will help you remember which way the pins go, how everything was orientated before you got started. So I have a picture right here that goes along with this um, bracelet here. And as you can see, this is supposed to represent one of the links and this represents the arrow, because there's an arrow on the bottom. And then this is the pin, what it actually looks like when it's all the way out. So on these regular pins, it's kind of like a piece of folded metal. And the one side is going to be thicker. It doesn't really look like that. It's just to represent that it's thicker. And there's a thinner side. And what's happening, you're always going to remove a pin um, following the arrow. So the arrow is telling you what direction to push the pin out. So when this pin is fully engaged, this fat end is inside the link, and that's what's providing all the friction. And the the rest of the pin is just kind of seated in the link, but it's loose. So the reason you drive the pin out, going the direction of the arrow, is because you're just pushing that fatter end out the top. What you wouldn't want to do, and as if a pin was in backwards, which sometimes if you're working with a bracelet that someone else has sized, you can actually put the pin in this way with the bigger end on the bottom and you could put it in and then you could drive in so the fatter end is in this piece. But if you try to remove it that way, you can't drive the fatter end all the way through the link. So you're really only dealing on these systems, a very small piece that's providing the friction for, um, for the, to hold the pin in place. And that's why you wanna drive in from this way. And then when you put it back in, you can use the arrow for two ways. So when you're going out, you want to think, okay, I want to push the pin out the way the arrow is pointing. And then when you're putting it back in, you just think of the arrow a different way. The arrow is showing you which side do you put the larger end, the fatter end. So if you interpret the arrow that way, it's saying put the pin over here and have the fatter end on the arrowhead side and then you're gonna put the pin back in. It's gonna go like 90% of the way in, and then it's gonna stop where it gets thicker, and that's what you're actually driving in with either your screw or your hammer. So I'm gonna to try to do this on camera for you. Um, it might be a little bit uh, hard to follow, but we'll do our best. Let's see. So when you use one of these, 
you're going to want to get it lined up. So remember, you're going to go with your arrow. You want to go to push the direction of the arrow. And then you're going to put this here. I'm going to pause the video really quick. But what you want to do is you want to get this back. And then this can go up and down. And you want this to be laying here. And you want the bracelet to be flush. So flush is a big thing. Um, when you're using either these hammer systems or these pinning collars, you always want the links to be flush. Because sometimes you can get them in here and it's a little loosey-goosey. And it could be fine, but if you can find, there's all these different sizes on here. If you can find one that's a little smaller, like this angle right here, um, you see this one is much thicker down the middle. And then uh, these side ones are thinner. So for this bracelet, this diagonal one is perfect. Um, for this bracelet. And you would wanna make sure you're always lining up so there's holes in the bottom. You want your pin to be aligned over that hole so you can drive it out. But if you can get one where there's a little bit less play, where it's fitting perfectly, you're gonna have a much easier time driving it out. So let me get it lined up on here. I'll show you what you're looking for. All right, so I have it lined up. Obviously you don't wanna do it like just holding it in the air, but I'm just doing it for the video. Um, you can raise and lower this piece because you want the bracelet to be flush both against this side and kind of laying flat. You don't want the pin to be going in an angle. And then when you're driving this in, if you're doing it right, I have it going a little bit, but the second I turn on that left side, you should be able to see right above my left thumb, the pin is starting to come out right away. And it should be nice and clean. There shouldn't be a lot of resistance. Um, I'm gonna put it back down to do the rest, but you'll know right away if you're doing it right. But you want that pin to start appearing on the other side. And then often what I do is when I start to get it going this way, um, you can also do it where you kind of get it started with this guy because this guy won't actually, it depends on maybe how long your um, screw is on this guy. Um, and there's different tips for this. If it's not fitting, you want to make sure it fits in the hole. This one won't actually push these all the way out. So oftentimes I'll get it started so I know I have it going. And then I will use this hammer system to finish driving it out. So what you want to do is remember how I said this one is better, this thinner one. I want to get this pin right over this hole. And I'm going to get it all lined up for you and I'll show you what it should look like. Okay, so I have it lined up for you guys. So here we have, if you look on the bottom, you should be able to see that pin. We got it started, remember, that pin is in that hole. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I can see it. Um, so make sure that pin is lined up over that hole and then make sure everything is nice and flush. And then you're just gonna get it down onto a level surface. And then you're gonna take your little, um, ooh, I moved it a little bit, see? <laughs> but you wanna make sure it's nice and lined up. Um, you wanna take your little hammer piece and your little hammer. Make sure you have the right size so it goes right in the hole. And now we've gotten it started with the driver. So now if we have everything lined up, it should come through nice and easily. So just, and remember what we're doing here. So this helps to keep this in mind. We have it orientated, the arrow is pointing down. So we're driving our hammer piece down. And the only place that the pin is frictioned in is this larger end. And it's about halfway out now already from the screwdriver. So all we're gonna do is apply pressure to get this piece to come out the bottom, and then the pin will be free and should drop. So we're gonna have it lined up, and we're just gonna give it a gentle tap. Right there, it worked on the first time because we got it started with that driver. And that's all the force you really need. If you're hammering away and it's not moving, just stop because either something is lined, not lined up or it's going the wrong direction. But you'll see we can lift this whole thing, and our pin is free, and now our pieces will come apart. Now let's take a closer look at this pin. Now it's difficult for me to focus on this, but as you can see, that's the fatter end. Do you see how it flares out? And if you look at the other end, it's just the same um, diameter as the pin itself. So it's pretty subtle, but you'll see that that pin is wider at the top. Hopefully you can see it. And the other way you can tell is if you look, if these are folded pins, there's a line where this got folded over on itself and there will not be a line on the other end. It's, it's straight. So let me show you how to put one of these back in really quick. We're gonna do everything, we're gonna do the opposite. So let me get set up and I'll show you. So here we're gonna use our picture. We have our pin. We have the larger end at the top, the smaller end at the bottom, like that. And here we have our bracelet. So we're gonna put it together and now we're gonna follow the arrow, but we're gonna interpret the arrow slightly different. We're gonna interpret the arrow as it's telling us um, which side to put the, the fatter end. So if we look at our picture, and this is why it's good to draw a picture, the fatter end should be at the top 
going towards down the arrow. So we're going to line this up and it's going to go down. Now this will go all the way and then stop because remember this is the only piece that's actually providing friction. So the, um, the um, uh, pin is all the way down about 90% and we're going to have to hammer this part in. Um, so I'll get a setup on the hammer. So I got us locked in and now it doesn't matter, uh, you don't have to be over a hole or anything for this. And I can show you, I'll show you up close. So the pin is only out a little bit and then we're going to drive the pin down. So you can just hit it with the hammer, um, flush. If you want to be a little bit more direct, you have to have a very steady hand. You can take one of these and you can put it on the top of the pin and then you can drive. Now this is going to be a lot easier to drive it in. You just want to be careful especially if you're working with a nice bracelet, you don't want to you don't want to scratch your bracelet by riding off this pin. But if you go nice and gentle, that'll drive it in. Now the third method you can use, and this is a little tricky too, but you can actually put it in this driver and then you can get it where it's lined up and you can just screw it in. I don't like that method because it tends to slip off the pin. I just like to do it with this and I like to have it nice and flush. I like to use this pin right here and this is like too hard to do on camera. You can see I'm slipping, um, but you can just drive it in. So, all right, so I did it off camera. Sorry about that, but you can see it's driven in and it's uh, flush now, a little bit uh, receded. And you can always check your work if you did, um, let's see if I can get it to focus here. Uh, you can see the line on the pins. I don't know if those are coming through, but this side, the pins don't have that line because only the, the bigger end has that line down the middle, um, kind of like, this bigger end. So if you did it right, all the bigger end should be on the, they should be, if you look at the arrow and interpret that this is the big side, this is the little side, they should all be on the big side. So when you look on these arrows, you can think to yourself, big side, little side. So all of these should have the lines in them. So that's a regular pin system. It's actually a lot, not that hard. The, uh, the one that's more tricky is the pin and collar system. So um, let me get set up and I'll show you how to do that one. All right, so on your pin and collar system, you have two pieces now, you have a pin, same, um, it's same all the way through. There's not a fat end and a little end. And then you have a little tiny collar. So I have this Seiko bracelet and I'm gonna line it up. So I drew this picture and you should draw the picture too whenever you're working with one of these. I believe on the two pin and collar Seiko bracelets I've done, the collar was always on the arrow side. Um, I don't know if that's always the case. You're gonna wanna take one out and then figure out which side the collar is on and I'll show you how to do that. But um, once you have your drawing, it'll be easier to understand. So the way these work is this pin will actually go all the way through and it drives through the collar and the collar expands and that's providing friction um, to keep the pin in place. What people sometimes do is they put this together, they f the pin falls out when they take the pin out and they don't realize it and it's lost in the carpet or something. And then they put the pin back in, um, but there's not a lot holding that pin. There's almost no friction. Um, so the pin can just slide right out and then your watch will fall off. So let me show you how to do this pin and collar system. So I'm going to start with, um, and I just took this all the way off. Another thing, obviously, um, some people do this with the watch on. It's probably best to do one of two things. You can either take the bracelet all the way off the watch, but then you're going to have to get it back on the watch, which can be difficult. Or if you want, you can pop this spring bar. So there's a spring bar right here, and you can use your same tool that you used and you can depress it and then you can um, pull it this way and it'll pop out. Um, I guess I'll show you really quick. You just wanna be careful because when you have it depressed, this is a spring bar. So you can kind of walk it towards you. You push in and then kind of walk it towards you. Oh, <laughs> that's the faster than I wanted it to go. But generally you wanna have your finger above it because it has a tendency to fly out like this because this is a spring loaded bar. But then when you do this, if you still had your watch on, the watch would be in the middle. And then you have, um, you can work with it a little bit easier. Probably easiest to take it all the way off, but um, that's what you can do on these ones. So I'll just work with this. This will make it easier for our purposes here. Um, don't lose this. This is another reason you wanna work in a tray. And even better than working in a tray, I would be working in a tray. And more than that, I would have like a little cup or something. I have this and I wanna take everything else out of it. I don't wanna be confused. So I just only have what I'm working with. And I'm gonna put this pin in here. So there's nowhere for it to go. Um, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna do one of these for you. 
So I like to start, I'm gonna get it set up. I'm gonna start with this. I always like to start with this, it's easier than the hammer. I don't finish with this, but I like to get it started. So let me stop and show you that. Okay, so I have everything lined up. Let's look at our picture really quick. So here's our arrow. I don't know if you can see the arrows right there. We're gonna be driving this forward. The pin should be on this side and the pin will go right through. So obviously you wanna do this flush on the surface, but I'm gonna do it like this for the video. You see the pin coming out? You know you're doing it right if the pin is just coming nice and out, nice and easy. There should be almost, I can do this with two fingers. I could do this with my pinky and my thumb. That's how much pressure you need, very little pressure. If you have everything lined up, everything should go nice and smooth. So I'm gonna get it started like that, and then I'm gonna back out. And then I'm gonna finish on the hammer uh, assembly and the brick. And so just like last time, I have the pin coming through the hole in the bottom. I'm all lined up. And I'll show you why it's useful to have two of these. Um, when you have two, you can kind of like align the bracelet like this and it just lets it kind of stay flush. Um, and if, especially if you have the watch in the middle, you can put them on the other side of the watch and that will help a lot. So now we're going to take our hammer, we're going to take our pin and we are going to, we already got it started remember, so this should be pretty easy. Just really gentle and really gentle here and you can feel if it's resisting you, you want to make sure you have everything lined up again. Always check. You can check. Um, you can stop and check. That's You can take your time with this. Like Rushing is what gets you in trouble, but just take your time. When you have it right, every time you hit this, I'm feeling it go down a little bit. And that's how I know everything's lined up appropriately. And just, oh, there we go. So nice, slow, steady pressure. You don't really don't have to hit it hard or screw hard with this thing. Everything, when it's lined up, will go nice and smooth. So we're going to take this out. And now we're going to pull this up. So here's our pin. See, now look, our pin is free of the collar. So it's gonna come right out. And here's our pin. Same on both sides. Uh, if I can flip it with one hand. Same on both sides. Now let's refer to our picture because our collar is still in the bracelet. So where's our arrows? Oh, let's see if I can do this. Oh, <laughs> so we'll flip it back around. So here's our arrow. So based on the picture, the collar should be on the arrow side. So I'm gonna open it, and then I'm gonna go like this. There it is. So the collar was laying in the same side as the arrow. And this is the piece that people lose. And this is not the piece that you wanna lose. So let's inspect the collar to understand it a little bit more so you can understand what's going on when you do the collar. So the collar, and this is why it's good to have tweezers. We'll see if I can focus on it. So the collar, sorry, I had to pause to focus on it, is very small. And you might be able to see it's got a little line. It's basically a piece of metal that's rolled, but it doesn't, it's not a solid piece of metal. Um, there's a little seam on it. It's a little bit hard to tell on my tweezers, but this is very small. Um, but there's a seam, you can kind of make it out there. And that will let the, as the pin goes through the collar, it lets the collar expand. And that's what uh, is creating the friction for you. So you don't want to lose this guy. So take your collar. And then remember how we're working with our bucket? We're going to put our collar in there. And then we're going to put our pin in there so we don't lose our stuff. So now we're going to put it back together. We're just going to do the opposite. So we're going to consult our picture again. So here's our bracelet. And we have our arrow on this side. Oh, let's see if we can hold it. And here's our picture. So we know that on the arrow side is where we're going to put the collar. So this is kind of a tricky part. Um, this is our arrow side. And maybe I, I shouldn't have done this link because this link doesn't actually have the arrow, but that's okay. So we're going to take our collar with our tweezers, and I don't think it matters which way this collar goes in, but you're going to want to go line it up, and this is why the tweezers help, and it should drop right in. Okay, now it's in there. But now you just want to be kind of careful because you don't want the collar to fall out because it will just fall back out. So we know that the collar is on our arrow side. So we're gonna go like this. And now we have the collar in the middle. Now this might be kind of tricky to do on camera, but so again, we know that the collar's on this side and we wanna put our pin back in. Now I always go down, back down the opposite way that I came in, kind of like how you do on the other. Um, and I don't know if that matters. I think it does, it, I think it must. Um, so I'm just gonna grab this and I'm gonna get it going. And it will go kind of far. It's not gonna go 90% like last time. And why is it not going 90%?
you see we put the pin in, we have our collar in. So the pin is driving and it's hitting the collar. So that's where it's at right now. And it can't go any further because we need to drive it into the collar. So unlike on the uh, just the pin system where it goes about 90% of the way in, you know you're doing it right if it's about 70% of the way in on this one. And so on this, I'm gonna use the hammer. I'm gonna get it set up and I'll hammer it in for you guys and show you. Now I've seen online, uh, some people have just put it against the surface and popped it in. I think I don't can't do that, but if you know how to do that trick, you can do it. But I'll show you how to do it with the hammer because it's pretty easy. So I think I have it in a good position in the brick. Again, you want everything to be nice and flush. So I used one of the ones where it's not as wide, it's a little bit tighter. So everything should be tight. And now same thing, you just wanna do nice, steady, even small tap pressure. And you should feel it going down, it's going down. That's how I know, if it's resisting at all, stop and try to line everything back up. But it's going down. With each tap, it's going down. And now it's about half of the way in. So you can even check at this point. So we know it's driving into the pin, or into the collar. It's not through all the way yet, but we, we're making good progress. So we know everything is lined up. So we put it back in, we make sure everything is flush. Everything is nice and flush, and we can keep driving. You see how easy that was? It went right in. And then to finish it off, this is a little bit less risky. Again, you wanna be careful though. You can put this right on the pin, and then just kind of give it those last three taps. And now you can see it's nice and flush. Not flush, sorry, it's you know sunken and recessed on both sides. And that's how you do the pin and collar system. Um, so you'd wanna do that uh, as many times as you need. So to finish this up, let's remember, you can always refer to your uh, parts. If there's still a part in there, you're not done. So I'm gonna grab my spring bar and then I'm gonna feed it into this part. Okay. And then you're just gonna line it up like this and you wanna make sure it slots into the bottom one. And then I would rest it right above like this because all you gotta do then, just need to um, press down so you're retracting the spring bar until it's small enough to fit underneath here. Let's see if I can do it. There you go. And then once you have it, you're gonna walk it in and listen for it to snap. It just did it. Maybe you probably didn't hear it. And now, before you just throw this back on your watch, do a check. So make sure it's seated correctly there, all the way in. And it's seated correctly on this other side. Um, and you can even give it a test with your um, little pokey bar. Because uh, occasionally, it will kind of be resting there, um, but it's not all the way engaged on both sides. And then it'll kind of fall off later. But we have it nice and tight in there, so. We're done. We could put this back on our watch now that we've, well, obviously we didn't remove or uh, take any links out, but you know, you determine how many links you need in or out. So hopefully these pictures help your understanding of what's happening on the pin and collar and the regular collar system. And I encourage you to draw pictures or take pictures. Um, so for me, this really helps. And I practiced a number of times um, on these bracelets. And that's what built up my confidence to a point where I wasn't afraid to size this bracelet, even though, you know, this is a very expensive watch. I didn't want to damage it. Um, but by the time I did this one, I was so confident with because I knew what I was doing and I had diagrammed it out. So I hope that helps you guys. All right, thanks.